Hello and welcome to The Varietal Show. If you've never been here before, my name is Rory and you're watching Varietal Literature's YouTube page, which is also a website which has some of my own writing and some of my writer friends who are all a part of Varietal. Um, what is this? Well, tonight is a write-along stream. Every Thursday night, we take some sort of structure of prompts and we have what's called a lit game and we write together and uh, either you can help me write the thing I'm going to write in Google Docs that you can see here or you can write your own thing, put it in the comments, put it in the chat, as long as it's not horrifyingly um, uh, 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 bad, um, then I will, um, uh, uh, not bad in the sense like badly written, but like bad in the sense that it's like terribly racist or something. Uh, beyond that, I will read it, uh, probably aloud on the stream. <clears throat> uh, the, um, uh, but if you are a person who came here from the Fireside Fairy Tales, you should know that that runs every Tuesday nights at 6.30 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and it's not what we're doing tonight, so if that's what you're into, I mean, you can give us a shot here. You might like it. Uh, but if not, uh, I'll see you Tuesday. I... Uh, which reminds me, by the way, if you are a fan of that series, you should absolutely check out the recent one. Unfortunately, it involves a donkey in it, and it uses the, let's say, old school name for a donkey uh, repeatedly. And I think that has led it to being a little buried by the algorithm, uh, because I think it thinks I'm swearing a lot, uh, which is unfortunate. Um... <laughs> Uh, so the thing that we're doing tonight is called uh, uh, Sweaters by Hedgehog. I did not create these games. Uh, these are games that I got off itch.io from one of two bundles. One is Solo But Not Alone 3, which is a bundle that puts money towards uh, uh, mental health um, charity. Uh, but this one in particular came from a bundle for uh, trans rights in Florida. Uh, it's got a longer name than that. It's like tabletop RPGs for trans rights or something. Um, but uh, I can link it in a pinned comment later. If you guys want to buy it yourself, that uh, is five, $5 for 500 tabletop RPGs and all the money, of course, going towards trans rights, which are human rights. Um, <clears throat> oh, wow. Got a few people in here. Um, Big Drew says he's talking about, uh, well, he says it in a Scottish way, but I'm still not going to risk it. I'm not losing two streams on this. Um, Just Fleece It Out here says, ooh, he broke 100 followers. I did, and I don't know what to do about it. Uh, I feel like I owe the community something, if I can even call you guys that, uh, if you will allow me that. But I don't know what to do with that. Hello, Jenna. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. I'm a little scrambly tonight, aren't I? Let's see if I can get my brain together and let's talk about it tonight's Lick Game. <coughs> Lick Game stands for literature games and it's just writing games, expressive games, lyric games, or solo tabletop RPGs. They're all kind of different names for the same basic idea, which is you somehow use a random prompt structure, whether it's drawing cards, rolling dice, sometimes a Jenga tower is involved, whatever else, to get ideas uh, uh, starting points for little either pieces of a story or a full story and in most cases it's a solo journaling thing where you occupy the headspace of a character and the tonight's game um sweaters by hedgehog which is cute as hell um <clears throat> i'm getting congrats for 100 well thank you very much i am genuinely pleased and touched to, to have broken 100 i think we're at like 100 and something right now um I, uh, yeah, especially just right before the two-year anniversary of the show and my birthday next week. People are thinking of getting me anything. Subscribers, how nice. No, I'm kidding. The, um, <clears throat> uh, but Sweaters by H Hedgehog, um, is a solo tabletop RPG that's just about a hedgehog who runs a store where he sells sweaters, and, uh, you write little journal entries from his perspective about the cute things he meets using prompts from playing cards just regular ass playing cards um the thing about this though is i'm going to take a slightly different perspective uh i'm not going to make this one a journaling game 
I'm gonna make this an omniscient voice game, like classic Winnie the Pooh style storytelling, because that's the vibe I get off it, and I kind of have never really done much in that format on this show, and I, I, you know, it's mostly me playing around with different styles of writing. Um, you guys can write it however you want. You want to write it from the perspective of the hedgehog, you're welcome to. Uh, if you want to share in the prompts and come up with your own ideas, go to town. If you want to steal my ideas, I don't mind. The, um, <clears throat> I did also something else different with this. Um, I wrote about a page's worth of stuff. I mean, it's blown up into large text. But I wrote about a page's worth of stuff to start us off to see if that helps us get into this a little quicker. Um, but just very basically, the way the game works is right at the top of the page here, which is you split the deck. Um, <clears throat> you split the deck into its different suits. Of course, a regular deck of cards has four suits. And you split the, um, <clears throat> the uh, jokers one into the black suits, one into the red suits, and you sort of just flip a coin to see which one is. I've already set all of that up. When somebody enters the store, and I wanted to get a little ringing sound, like somebody came in the door, um, but uh, I couldn't really figure out, I couldn't find a good version of it. Let me put it that way. Um, the, um, <clears throat> um, we, when somebody comes in the door, we pull a card from each pile. Each card means something different, very briefly. Hearts represents what type of creature the customer is. Diamonds represent something about their interaction with us as the little hedgehog. Uh, clubs represents what they're looking to purchase, which will be something about sweaters. And spades represents what color or style of sweater they ultimately end up purchasing. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, in other words, we're just going to write little stories about creatures, animal creatures coming into a place and buying sweaters from a hedgehog. That's what tonight's show is, because I wanted to do it. And you can't make me do anything I don't want to do on my own show. Um, the, uh, <coughs> um, yeah, that's about it. So I'm going to open tonight's show by uh, reading a little passage that just sort of introduces the character that I see in my head. You don't have to use this one. Uh, and a little bit about the little town. So that by the time we get to a customer coming into the door, you guys have a good sense of like the tone that that I think this this tabletop RPG is is going for. <clears throat> so buckle up. I'm gonna do my best. Um, actually, here I'm, I'm gonna change the soundtrack just for a second, just a second. I'm gonna do. There we go. Maybe a, maybe a little maybe a little loud. Let's turn that down a bit. This, by the way, uh, is from if if people are tabletop RPG fans. This came uh, from kickstarting Flea Mortals, Mortal Kombat, or uh, Mortal Kombat, Matt Colville's D&D uh, uh, &D, um, villain book that he's working on. And uh, he had some music made that supposedly won't get flagged. Okay. I feel like this is the better, better mood setter. We'll go back to our other music in a minute. In a small grove hidden by the tall reeds of a murky swamp, there is a peaceful village where forest critters share their wares. You'll likely never see it for it was hidden so carefully under little moss roofs, and you'll probably never hear it for its cheer is muffled by the mists of a rumbling waterfall. It is a place of river pebble roads and wild heather hedgerows. It is here that Herschel Pilling the Third made his trade as the finest knitter in all the grove. He came from a long line of adventurous hedgehogs, one whose whiskers knew the frost of a long winter journey better than the grey of a quiet elder age. Yet he had his fill of adventure by his mother and father's side, and enjoyed now instead the adventure of new people that came through his sweater store. Herschel, or Hershey, as the friendlier townsfolk called him, was an adventurer in the way of patterns for his sweaters and colors for his yarns. It was natural a hedgehog should like a sweater, of course, for the open loops of the garments knit allowed his back of caramel and gray spines to slip through where they may have otherwise torn a regular shirt. Anyhow, 
It was here in the midst of the great waterfall, under a roof of fine living moss, that Hershey the Hedgehog brewed his pot of dandelion tea, then loosed the button that held his shop's door shut, opening for another day of strange folk searching for a warm sweater. Okay. There we go. We, we can we can we can put uh put on the uh, the atmospheric music again if people want. <clears throat> Um, anyways, the, uh, which means now I need to draw, uh, a few cards and then we'll see what our prompts get, what prompts we get. And, uh, we'll write that first interaction. Uh, so the, uh, oh, I meant to do this earlier. Sorry. Uh, it's going to be a type of creature interaction, searching, looking to purchase and what do they purchase? Okay. So type interaction if you don't know what's going on don't worry mingle amongst each other type interaction searching for left with there we go okay so uh my first card that i'm drawing is a jack of clubs the next card i am drawing is a four of diamonds the third card I am drawing is the Four of Hearts. And the fourth card I am drawing is the Ten of Spades. So let's see what the prompts are for all of those. So starting with the Hearts, which will tell us the creature type. It was a Four of Hearts, which is a raccoon. Oh, I love raccoons. Uh, so chat right away, you know what I'm gonna ask. I need good raccoon names. You know how I am. We could spend the whole stream waiting for me to come up with names. Why can I not remember? It's both. Yeah. I swear I'm a writer. I just can't spell raccoon. <clears throat> okay. Um, the interaction is the diamonds. And we got a four of diamonds. Which is they have several children with them. How are the children related to this person? I guess they mean like is it a teacher... Are they babysitting? Oh boy, that didn't that didn't work, did it? Okay. They have several children with them. I think raccoons have crowds of children. Uh okay, and they are searching for a jack of or a ten of spades, rather. It's the jack of clubs we have. Okay, ten of spades. A sweater in their team's colors. There's an important match tomorrow, but the weather is supposed to be chilly. What team are they a fan of? Is it a local team or a visiting rival? Okay, they want... They're searching for a sweater in their team's color. So, the, right away there, um, chat, we're going to have to decide what the sport is. What sport do little animals play? And uh, uh, what colors are are they looking for? <clears throat> and they left with the club, a jack of clubs, is Argyle. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess if you guys don't know what Argyle looks like, let me pull it up. Some of these prints are probably going to be a little confusing for some people. Isn't Argyle what he calls himself, the dude calls himself in um, Die Hard? Uh, this is Argyle, if you guys don't know. Those are various examples of Argyle. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, Smudge. I can see Smudge. You guys can't. But I'm sure if he gets lonely, which he has been very fussy and lonely lately, he might crawl up here. Try to become a part of the show. <coughs> Okay, just give me a second, I'm going to have a drink of water, and then we will write as the bell rings and our little uh, hedgehog greets another customer. We will learn about ra this raccoon with several children looking for a sweater in their team's color for a game tomorrow, and they're going to leave with an Argyle-style sweater. Uh, wow. Wow. My god, are there a lot of recommendations already? 
It's funny how uh, you never quite know which game is going to connect with chat. Um, Big Drew says Flaherty, the Irish raccoon. Holly's house says Uncle Gerald. That sounds like someone who would eat garbage. I think I have an Uncle Gerald. Um, the uh, Ratchet. Ratchet's a good name from Jenna. A Big Drew building on his recommendation. Flaherty Mc McGroggan. Holly's house says Gubbins. Big Drew says Ringo. <laughs> um, Jenna says they should be playing rugby. Holly's house says lawn bowling. Imagine those little patty paws throwing those balls. You know, I uh, you know I I think lawn bowling feels right um, because uh, let me explain myself because uh, it's hard for me to imagine any interaction between these creatures that involves any kind of physical sport where it isn't just you crushing another one. And I realize like it's a happy little land of where everyone kind of gets along, but my imagination has limits. And if I'm imagining and play a sport played by hedgehogs and large raccoons, I cannot imagine them playing a contact sport and not destroying the hedgehog. Um, uh, okay, Big Drew says they play ice hockey. Yeah, see, lacrosse, rugby, and ice hockey are all recommended, and water polo. I used to play water polo, by the way. Um, and those are all great recommendations, but I, I don't know how to write that uh, without leaving a subtext of a lot of dead animals. Um, so, to keep this cheerful, I'm going to go with lawn bowling, because that's like the most where your size and shape wouldn't matter much. <clears throat> it's also like placid as a sport. Curling is another option, but I don't want it to be winter. Curling is just lawn bowling on ice. Um, okay. So, uh, lawn bowling. And uh, yeah, if for all those who care about colors out there, let me know what the colors should be for the team and whether it's a, a home or away team that they're buying a sweater in those colors. As far as the name, like all the names I've gotten here are good. So who am I going to go with? <sighs> hmm. I guess I'll go with the first one I got. That way, it doesn't feel like I'm I'm being too too favorited. Um, Rufus Raccoon. <laughs> Jenna says I was just laughing, imagining the chaos of animals playing a crazy contact sport. Yeah. Yeah, me too. And I, I just know it's going to come out and it's going to be grim and I, I don't want to I don't want to do that. Um, uh, okay. Uh, GS says yellow and black. Also, if you guys want to give a name, uh, it's a good chance for puns. Okay. Uh, oh, I don't have a name for this shop. That's another thing. You guys are welcome to give me a name for the uh, for Hershey, Hershey the Hedgehog's uh, sweater shop. I, I didn't think of a name for it. I should have thought of that ahead of time. The little bell that a butterfly gifted um, Hershey rang its announcement this is a overly long sentence already rang its announcement of an, the day's first customer Hershey always liked that first customer to go perfectly he felt it set the tone for the day. However, 
shortly after the bell rang, his sensitive little ears filled with the cries and shouts cries are the wrong word chatters they chatter right like like uh raccoons have that like nah, 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 nah. that's not at all what it sounds like it's like still not what it sounds like <laughs> look i can't this i'm a writer i'm not a raccoon noisemaker Unsub. <laughs> um, sensitive little ears are filled with chatters and shouts of a whole herd of hungry raccoons. Pokey nits and things. I see as a recommendation for the name. GS says for the team Roland Bolin. I like that. Big Drew says, who's ever heard of sweaters in winter? I mean, obviously, constantly, but uh, I meant more so I don't want to do like descriptive prose of frozen stuff. Uh, I want it to be warm and sunny because I just personally want it to be warm and sunny. Um... <clears throat> Okay, sensitive little ears filled with chatters and shouts of a whole herd of hungry raccoons. A bellowing voice of an exasperated man said, Well now, shut it down and sit it down, you garbage. Rummaging little rodents. I must. I must get my sweater. And I cannot do so with all of you scrabbling about. Exasperated, not a man, creature. <sighs> well, now shut it down and set it down, you garbage rummaging little rodents. Hershey um, hustled around. from his wing, uh, hustled up, let's say, up from his wing back in his tea room and hustled. Okay, wait, and hurried? getting too specific on words but I it's in my head now scrambled up from his wing back in his tea room and hurried out to the front where his many fine sweaters sat every inch of floor space was filled with little raccoon pups. Is that the right word? We still haven't really established the relationship this guy has. I'm, I'm going with an uncle, but if anybody else wants our, um, <clears throat> our, uh, raccoon of, um, what did we say his name was? <laughs> Rufus, if, um, <clears throat> anyone, uh, wants Rufus to have a different kind of, uh, 
connection to them, whether it be a teacher or something like that, let me know. Every inch of floor space was filled with a little raccoon pups <coughs> or shelves. Every inch of floor space not filled with sweaters, tables of sweaters. was crowded by little raccoon pups each with fine rings on fuzzy tails <coughs> we gotta vote for kits raccoon kits does anybody even know that it's pups still not the right word <laughs> kits if you're i mean if you don't live in vancouver it doesn't matter but for people that live in vancouver kits just is what we call kitsilano which is an area in well vancouver um and uh um it's hard for me to break that association it makes it sound like it's a kind of ritzy area uh, so it makes me think of, um, it just makes me think we're saying that, uh, it's a raccoon that's kind of high society. Uh, each with fine rings on their bobbing, on their fuzzy tails. I'm not going to add more adjectives there. Uh, every inch of floor space not filled with tables. Okay. Okay. I don't know why I'm being so picky about pros today, but I am not filled with tables of sweaters was crowded by little raccoon kits, each with fine rings on their fuzzy tails and two pink hands daubing Is that the right spelling for that? Um... I'm checking it. Yeah, that is. Okay. <clears throat> Two pink hands daubing various um, san uh, uh, smears of ketchup and soil upon Hershey's fine wares. Holly South says raccoons have black hands. When they're young, though, because, like, even cats, when they're young, if they get black hands, they're kind of pink when they're young. Um, especially at the palm. Anyways. The, um, one kit wants to use the washroom, GS says. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good point. Okay, ketchup and soil upon Hershey's fine wares. Fine woven wares, let's say. My God, get me out of this paragraph. Uh, okay. Well, good day, sir. How can I help your herd today? <clears throat> the, um... Hershey asked the tallest of the bunch, a full-waisted man, a full-waisted um, raccoon whom he knew as Rufus. I'll be in and out in a jiffy. Don't worry about that. I'll see to it 
none of my nieces or nephews do any damage to your fine uh, knittery. Ollie South says, I've had many an experience over the years with mother raccoons and their babies. Mothers always seem exasperated like the mother werewolf in Hotel Transylvania. <laughs> Rufus exclaimed with confidence as <clears throat> Three of the little kits tipped over a rack of sweater vests stitched. in the colors and patterns of butterfly wings. The crash startled Rufus, who turned around and roared about in a chattering language that Hershey could not speak. Though the kids, kits, pulled their ears back and looked well regretful for their chaos. Oh. The kids pulled their ears back and looked well regretful for their chaos. Um, <clears throat> uh, perhaps it would be best if I knew what you wanted and got it for you. Hershey asked, maintaining the utmost respect. That's what I thought. It is T, right? Yeah, the utmost respect. But also worrying about the state of his many hours of weaving. That laid about the storm. Rufus was a blunt, but not impers... Uh, not... What's the word I'm looking for? To, to not be perceptive. Maybe I shouldn't go with the double negative, eh? I know writing really likes you to do double negatives. Rufus was blunt, but perceptive. He saw the worry in Hershey's eyes and was about to offer to go outside when a cry went up 
from Little. This is taken from GS's recommendation. Um, uh, Jenna says imperceptive. I think you're right. Um, I think you're right, but I don't know. I'm second guessing myself. Little Willy Raccoon. The most fidgety kit in the bunch. <clears throat> he needed the washroom. Um, Hershey directed, Hershey smiled weakly and said, of, of, of course, um, I only have, uh, my own washroom. That's quite all right, Rufus added. He was grateful, but the problem became clear. Well, little Willie could fit in a hedgehog's Restroom, big old Rufus could not. So with a weepy, regretful expression, Rufus began a plea for the poor little hedgehog to take his nephew through the rituals of a washroom break. she had no way with kids let alone kits at once he tried to start a conversation about the local flowers in bloom But the little boy, the little kit, just stared blankly. He offered some toilet paper and found little Willie. had chewed it to shreds. <laughs> All this house points out how they wash their hands. Um... <clears throat> The, uh, yeah, that's right. And finally, un Hershey was unprepared 
for the splattery, splashy chaos that was a little raccoon. Washing its hands. By the end of the whole ordeal, poor Herschel. was half plastered, half plaster. Like a mummy that just woke up. <laughs> when all was done, Little Willie ran ahead back to the sweater room, causing something to crash. The Hershey has yet to find. And there, they met back up with Rufus. Oh, I hear Smudge is doing this thing. He does this thing where he just stands in the kitchen and he yells. He just yells and it's, uh, whoop. Uh, it's his way of like trying to get me to get up and go in there and pay attention to him. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, GS says, we need some bit of wisdom here. I have an idea. It's a little bit of a retcon in what we've established, but I have an idea. Um, the, um, um, yeah, Smudge does this thing where he just sort of screams and yells at the other side of the house and hopes that I come. And if I don't come, he jumps up and then yells in my face. Um, and he's doing that right now, and it's distracting. Smudge! You do not understand the writer's ennui. The, the atmosphere we cultivate. Respect the creative process. My boy. Started French, became Italian. I think if it kept going, it might become German. Uh, the, um... <clears throat> and there they met back up with Rufus. Alas, Rufus was clearly defeated by the war of attrition that only a pack of small children can play, can siege. Big Drew says, sounds like Smudge would be a good addition to your story. Yeah, I don't know where all the time is going. I'm taking forever here. I think we're only going to get one guest, which wasn't my plan. We might be able to get, like, one short one in the end. Uh, but I do have a, um, I do have an idea for a moral. Or, or at least some sort of cuteness. Can siege on the wills of others. Uh, GS says, we don't hear Smudge. Smudge is in your mind. He's also in my mind, but he's definitely here. This is a forward-facing mic. He's back there. This is directional. You won't be able to hear him. Um, Jenna says, "Oh, Smudge, just to be clear, Smudge is not in distress. He's just narcissistic and needy. <clears throat> um, that only a pack of small children can siege on the wills of their caregivers. <laughs> For in the moments that Little Willie had drawn away Hershey, the pack 
of kits had tipped stained rolled and run through nearly half the fine sweaters of Hershey's little shop. Before Hershey could even speak, Rufus held up his paw and said, you needn't say it. I will take every sweater they've damaged <clears throat> actually I am um, they've stained rolled or run through let's let's reuse the phrase that's very storybooky You needn't say it. I will take every sweater they've stained, rolled, or run through. As is fair. I came here, of course, to buy myself a fine yellow and black sweater. The colors of the rolling bowling who are playing the lawn bowling Yes, says oops. Uh, Mindy Kuhn has climbed up the drapes and won't come down. <clears throat> I came here, of course, to buy myself a fine yellow and black sweater, the colors of my favorite team, the Roland Bowlers, who are playing the lawn bowling tournament tomorrow. But now I must spend every cent to do right by the damage my kits have caused. Hershey wanted to reject this offer, but as he watched little Mindy, her claws dug into his drapes, slide down behind a tipped pile of argyle sweaters. Tearing noises uh, slide down tear it slide down yeah, let me 
But as he watched little Mindy with her claws dug into his drapes, slide down behind a tip pile of argyle sweaters, leaving behind a neatly shredded cloth <clears throat> he had to agree this was only fair by the time the many sweaters were charged out poor Rufus looked ready to cry he swung open the door letting his nieces and nephews filter out ahead oh I heard a closer meow hello he's up on the window now yeah it didn't it wasn't very effective was it smudge well, you can come and say hello to the stream um and shivered with the early spring breeze. Hershey ran after him in a sudden burst and passed a package to Rufus. <clears throat> Saying it's all well and good. To have stuff. But I can't. Let a man. Let a good raccoon. Trying to help. Raise good kits. Go about getting a chill. <clears throat> After all, I can knit more.
All right. All right. I, I'm, I'm doing that thing where I'm, I'm falling into a hole of indecision. It's, it's, it's just a draft, Rory. It's all well and good to have stuff and money. But it's a very, it's a rare thing indeed. To find a good raccoon trying to raise good kits. I can't have good folk. Going about getting a chill. Consider it a gift for a friend. Inside the package was, of course, a black and yellow Argyle sweater. A great big smile grew on the great big raccoon's face. And he said, you know, if you ever need a hand in the store, these kits owe you a lot and would be happy to no! That's fine. Hershey shouted a bit too loud. Calming himself, he continued. Ah, uh, that's uh, a fine thought. But entirely unnecessary. Hershey staggered on home, feeling faint at even the prospect. of their return and closed up for the day. He drank some tea and looked around his crumbled kingdom of sweaters. Concluding that was a problem for tomorrow, Herschel So he settled into his wing back. For a nap. Uh, that joke I pulled from, um, Hershey, uh, from GS, I should say. Okay. My god. This took me a while to get out. It's very indecisive. I just realized we have 515 pages. That's nuts. <laughs> I mean, admittedly, it's large text, but that's still kind of nuts. Uh, all right. <clears throat> I'm gonna have a drink of water, and then we're gonna read it back. Okay, so, <clears throat> if you're coming to this part of the stream, if you're jumping ahead, it's because you just want to hear the results. So we were playing a game called Sweaters by Hedgehog, which is an expressive game, a role-playing game, a solo tabletop game, uh, where we play a little hedgehog who sells sweaters, and then we pull cards 
It gives us some prompts about the kind of customers that come in and we write a little story. We actually only managed to get through one customer, though it was quite the little uh, hurricane. And we were kind of going for a storybook style here. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to read the intro that I wrote before the stream and I'm going to, because it links right into the stuff we did during the stream. Oh, and uh, I'm going to change over the, the sound because it's got to be the right kind of music, right? In a small grove hidden by the tall reeds of a murky swamp, there is a peaceful village where forest critters share their wares. You'll likely never see it, for it was hidden so carefully under little moss roofs. You'll probably never hear it either, for its cheer is muffled by the mists of a rumbling waterfall. It is a place of river pebble roads and a wild heather hedgerows. And it is here that Herschel Pilling III made his trade as the finest knitter in all the grove. He came from a long line of adventurous hedgehogs, ones whose whiskers knew the frost of a long winter journey better than the grey of a quiet elder age. Yet he had his fill of adventure by his mother and father's side and enjoyed now, instead, the adventure of new people that came through his sweater store. Herschel, or Hershey as the friendlier townsfolk called him, was an adventurer in the way of patterns for his sweaters and colors for his yarns. It was natural a hedgehog should like a sweater, of course, for the open loops of the garment's knit allowed his back of caramel and gray spines to slip through where they may have otherwise torn a regular shirt. Anyhow, it was here in the mists of the great waterfall, under a roof of fine living moss, that Hershey the Hedgehog brewed his pot of dandelion tea, then loosed the button that held his shop's door shut, opening up for another day of strange folk searching for a warm sweater. And now we get to the stream stuff. Uh, the type of animal we drew was a raccoon. The interaction was they have several children with them, uh, and they're searching for a sweater in their team's color, their team is uh, named in the story, but is a lawn bowling team. The colors are yellow and black, and they will leave with an Argyle sweater. The little bell that a butterfly gifted Hershey rang its announcement of the day's first customer. It hangs over the door, I realize. I forgot to say that. Hershey always liked that first customer to go perfectly. He felt it set the tone for the day. However, shortly after the bell rang, his sensitive little ears filled with chatters and shouts of a whole herd of hungry raccoons. A bellowing voice of an exasperated creature said, Well, now shut it down and sit it down, you garbage rummaging little rodents. I must, I must get my sweater and cannot do so with all of you scrabbling about. Well, Hershey scrambled up from his wing back in his tea room and hurried out to the front room. Every inch of floor space not filled with tables of sweaters was crowded by little raccoon kits, each with fine rings on their fuzzy tails and two pink hands daubing various smears of ketchup and soil upon Hershey's fine woven wares. Well, good day, sir. How can I help your herd today? Hershey asked the tallest of the bunch, a full-waisted raccoon whom he knew as Rufus. I'll be out and in and out in a jiffy, don't worry about that. I'll see to it none of my nieces or nephews do any damage to your fine, um, knittery, Rufus exclaimed with confidence as three of the little kits tipped over a rack of sweater vests stitched in the colors and patterns of butterfly wings. The crash startled Rufus, who turned around and roared about in a chattering language that Hershey could not speak, though the kits pulled their ears back and looked well regretful for their chaos. Um, perhaps it would be best if I knew what you wanted and got it for you, Hershey asked, maintaining the utmost respect, but also worrying about the state of his many hours of weaving that laid open and exposed about the store. Rufus was a blunt but perceptive animal. He saw the worry in Hershey's eyes and was about to offer to go outside when a cry went up from Little Willie, the most fidgety kit in the bunch. He needed the washroom. Hershey smiled weakly and said, Oh, of course, um, 
I only have my own uh, washroom. Oh, that's quite all right, Rufus added. He was grateful, but the problem became clear. Well, little Willie could fit in a hedgehog's restroom, big old Rufus could not. So with a weepy, regretful expression, Rufus began a plea for the poor little hedgehog to take his nephew through the rituals of a washroom break. Hershey had no particular way with kids, let alone kits. At once, he tried to start a conversation about the local flowers and boom bloom with little Willie, but the little kit just stared blankly. Then Hershey offered some toilet paper, but found little Willie chewed it to shreds rather than using it as he should. And finally, Hershey was unprepared for the splattery, splashy chaos that was a little raccoon washing its hands. And by the end of the ordeal, poor Herschel was half plastered with the water and the toilet paper scraps like a mummy that just woke up from its tomb. <laughs> When all was done, little Willie ran ahead back to the sweater room, causing something to crash that Hershey has yet to find. And there they met back up with Rufus. Alas, Rufus was clearly defeated by the war of attrition that only a pack of small children can siege on the wills of their caregivers. For in the moments that little Willie had drawn away Hershey, the pack of kits had tipped, stained, rolled, and run through nearly half the fine sweaters of Hershey's little shop. Before Hershey could even speak, Rufus held up his paw and said, You needn't say it. I will take every sweater they've stained, rolled, or run through, as is fair. I came here, of course, to buy myself a fine yellow and black sweater. The colors of my favorite team, the Rollin' Bowlers, who are playing the lawn bowling tournament tomorrow. But now I must spend every cent to do right by the damage my kits have caused. Hershey wanted to reject this offer, but as he watched little Mindy with her claws dug into his drapes slide down behind a tipped pile of argyle sweaters, leaving behind a neatly shredded cloth over his window, he had to agree this was only fair. By the time the many sweaters were charged out, poor Rufus looked ready to cry. He swung open the door, letting his nieces and nephews filter out ahead, and shivered in the early spring breeze. Hershey couldn't leave it at that. So he ran after Rufus in a sudden burst and passed him a package, saying, it's, it's all well and good to have stuff and money, but it's a rare thing indeed to find a good raccoon uh, trying to raise good kits. I can't have good folk and kin going about getting a chill. Consider it a gift for a friend. And inside the package was, of course, a black and yellow argyle sweater. A great big smile grew on the great big raccoon's face, and he said, You, you know, if you ha need a hand in the store, these kits owe you a lot and would be happy to- No, that's fine, her, she shouted a bit too loud. Calming himself, he continued, Ah, oh, that's, a, that's a fine thought, but entirely unnecessary. Hershey staggered on home, feeling faint at even the prospect of the return of the crowd of little kits. And instead closed up for the day. He drank some tea and looked around his crumbled kingdom of sweaters, concluding that was a problem for tomorrow's Herschel. And so he settled into his wing back for a nap. G.S. says, Rory, your writing sounds like a published children's tale. Well, that's very kind of you. Uh, I think it would need an edit. Now, I know that Drew was writing something, so let's uh, let's see. Drew, is this going to ruin the mood? <laughs> Tell me now. Is this a, a horrible, violent story, or is it sweet? Um, Oh, I missed a message. That was a good idea, Holly's House. I missed it. He said, I think we should pick a letter, then choose the name of the parent and all the babies. That would have been cool. I didn't see that. Big Drew, I think this is where it starts. Sorry if it doesn't. It's the first message I have. Tingwell, a mother possum with seven babies, found a tax check in her mailbox and decided that her... Um, I just realized I still have the soft music on. Let's go back to the fun music. <laughs> Uh, realized that her 
Hustle could all benefit together. She wandered into Hershey's House of Hugs, and the hedgehog behind the counter was elated to be of assistant. Hershey took measurements and offered samples of fabrics and showed many different designs before Tingy decided on simple pullovers in a grey and navy gingham material. Uh, Hershey worked with his little hands like lightning, pulling the threads and fabric, making sure everything was perfect. I like this. This is cute. Tingy asked for a total as the last of her pastel was outfitted. Miss Tingwell, I'm offended, Hershey pro proclaimed. You know I work for barter and trade. Just bring me some of your famous cookies and a banana nut bread next week and we'll be square. I do like the idea of barter and trade. I did consider it, uh, actually, for my own story. And then I was like, this is, this is already complicated enough. You and the children go on now and have a great day. Tingwell bellowed back. You're one of the good ones, Hirsch. I'll be by on Tuesday. <laughs> is that a... <laughs> is, is there is there possum and hedgehog racism <laughs> um I, I just haven't heard that phrase much outside of uh satirical accounts of, of race uh racist interactions uh i'll be by on tuesday with some treats for you and the missus i have run through my Hassel is battling a troop of Argyle-clad raccoons here in a little bit. They'll be lawn bowling. My goodness, do you remember those days? Ah, it's connected. Ah, oh, that's sweet. <clears throat> the two seasoned friends parted for the day and Hershey was on to the next in line. I think... Uh, uh, a Petunia, an elder squirrel of some means, was in the market for a red woolen pea coat. She wanted to woo a new suitor since her husband, Gerald, had met his end. She was a lady of means and Hershey... Was again happy to oblige. For the first date, for the first date, Petunia, ever the forward type, would take her new beau Sinclair to the big long bowling match. She had a ter terrific. I do like this idea of all of us sort of writing something around the same I, kind of moment. On a maple limb, she had a terrific perch on a maple limb just off center field. Petunia, who, if I didn't mention already, was quite well off, tended to win over Sinclair by showing her off her vast collection of nuts. That in a particularly body mating dance should do it. <laughs> what a great line. Her vast collection of nuts. Well, Drew, I thought those were both delightful. Thank you very much for doing that and sharing them. All right. Well. Um, if you haven't yet, uh, check out this week's Fireside Fairy Tales. It's two long Nordic tales. Uh, um, so they're like, you can kind of dig in. One of them's about a boy who turns into a falcon and an ant. Uh, in cleverer ways than folk tales normally do. And the other one is really bizarre. <laughs> um, it involves him carrying around like 300 carcasses of bulls and stuff. Anyways. Um, <laughs> Big Drew says, I'm not always the violent mood killer. I don't think you kill moods. I don't think you kill moods at all. I'm always happy to have you here. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, you do have your, your sense of humor. Um, which I generally share, I should say. I just wondered if this time, whether you were going to lean into the cutesiness or whether you're going to be like... He, here, here's, here's Big Drew to make you feel better. Here's my first thought I had when I opened this game and I was reading it. As I was like, what if it's the story about how he's secretly an assassin hedgehog. <laughs> I don't know why that was the first idea I had. Uh, and it's not one I think I would have ever pursued, even now. But, um, but yes, I definitely, I definitely uh, relate. Well, anyways, uh, that's Sweaters by Hedgehog. Uh, maybe we'll play it again sometime. I don't know, I enjoyed that game. Um, if you want to buy it yourself, again, it's uh, itch.io. Uh, you can buy it in a bundle that, where all the proceeds go towards trans rights in Florida, where they need the support. Um, as for me, well, I really thank you guys for coming. Um, Big Drew says Secret Assassin could be fun. It could be. I think I wanted to go cute here, but in another, in another stream, maybe we'll do Assassin Hedgehog because it's great. It was great to see you again, Jenna. It's great to see you, Holly's house, uh, and it is always good to see you, GS. Uh, and you folks, you know, don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. 
get out of my sweater shop. Mm-hmm.